whenever I'm starting a new, like I'm starting a new novel round about now, I started one a couple of months ago. Um, so the ritual is, simple rituals, you get a new notebook and you start, and I start to scribble. Because you know that the final product, when it comes out, it's going to look perfect. Um, you know, and publishers are going to spend ages making this beautiful object, you know, the kind of thing that we all love, beautifully bound, beautiful print, no mistakes in it. But that's a perfect outcome, a, a very imperfect process. So I always get um, a new notebook and then just start to play and mess about. So I do a lot of this kind of messy stuff and um, I love this playing around. And the notion that, you know, I think creativity is imperfect. Um, imperfection is, that's what creativity is based in because we're imperfect creatures. If we were perfect, we wouldn't have to make anything. So I begin by accepting imperfection, doing a lot of this, you know, messing about, scribbling, doodling, playing. And I think the notion of play is really important. And some of the things won't come in, so you'd have to discard quite a lot. So everything that you come up with, you won't use. One of the problems with writing is you think, well, I'm going to have to think all of this. And if you just stop and try and think it all, you can't think it all. It's impossible to think just with that part of your brain. But if you put a pen in your hand and highlighters, I love highlighters and different coloured pens, and play around, play around, suddenly these things take on a much more vivid life. So you're never quite sure. So you always start with a, a thing. So with this, I think it must have been feathers, wings, the sensation of feather, feathers. So I was looking for something skelligy. And then it all kind of goes out and draws in all these other influences. It becomes lots of other things. And then suddenly it just goes, shoop, you know, it kind of all coheres into the thing that will start the, thing that will start the story. So there's a kind of chemistry. You think, oh, here it is, here it is. And at that point, you start to write it. Um, yeah, and then they'll, when you're writing it, there'll be <clears throat> various points through the book when you need to kind of do it again for each point of the book, get home, oh, I've got all these things going in, what happens next? And then shh, it'll go like that, and then you move forward again. And it's like you're working at things that suddenly start to move, and they start to grow into stories. And when that starts to happen, then I go to my computer and begin to work on the computer, and print out pages on the computer and scribble all, all of them, throw them out. And I always, I always have a title page like that. Um, so this is a bit of a ritual. When I begin to put the book together, I write myself, I type myself a title page. So here this one was called Eurydice Grey. So I have a title page in Eurydice Grey by David Armand. And then I put my address on as well. And then I say, well, so every time I pick it up, I say, oh, this is, oh yeah. This is Eurydice Grey by David Armand. Oh yeah. And then when I have a few pages, even just two or three pages, I hold it together with that. So it's beginning to feel like a book. And, I, and then it becomes a mixture between scribbling there, printing out, scribbling over the printout, throwing the printout away. When you write, it's all about trickery. It's all about charm, isn't it? You know, so when you write a book, you're hoping to charm the reader. So when you're writing the book, weirdly, you have to kind of charm yourself, think, oh, this is lovely. <laughs> even in the midst of thinking, God, this is bloody hard. So it's a kind of trickery and playfulness but it all takes place with a very kind of strict routine so I work you know I work in the library a lot I would go to the Lytton Phil in Newcastle and I sit at a table and I work from say 9 30 till 12 then have a lunch break then work in the afternoon um, so routine is really important so it looks messy and playful but it, it takes place within kind of rigid boundaries and then this whole process somehow in the end produces a book that you finish send off to a publisher and the publishers has to work and make it look beautiful, but what people don't see is the, you know, the messy imperfection. <laughs> I think if you feel you've finished, if you feel you've reached a kind of, oh, you know, I'm great now, I think that's doom for the writer. That really is doom. If I didn't write, if I'd written because I wanted to be, you know, well known and to make lots of money, I would have stopped. I wouldn't because I went in for 15 years when nobody knew about me. <laughs> and people said, you must be stupid. I said, I know I must be stupid. <laughs>